Hey everybody, my name is Jesse Nyberg. I'm a visual designer from Los Angeles, California. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create 3D text in Illustrator and using a gradient background fill as well as bringing it into Photoshop and tinkering with some of the effects and adding more flavor to it. Um, so this is my first video and I wanted to show you something pretty simple and hopefully it will be helpful for a lot of people who are beginners to the Adobe programs and people who have mastered it and are just looking to find a couple more tips and tricks. All right, so let's get started. So we're gonna start here in Illustrator and we're gonna go to File and Create New. And so for this, we wanna do 11 width and a 8.5 inch in height and so that's pretty much like a normal piece of paper but um, turn sideways all right let's name it let's do 150 ppi and rgb color so normally i would say to do cmyk when working in illustrator but we're going to bring this into photoshop anyway and photoshop's raster based so it kind of helps to be an rgb all right, so now that we have this open, we want to get our text. Let's write out, let's do super. It's a nice letter forms and everything. Actually, so you just want to click the type tool, click here, super, and make sure to do all caps. So you can do that by holding shift or caps lock, same as working in like any word processor. Let's do 72 point font. And so for this video, I'm going to actually get us a font on Adobe fonts or Adobe type kit so that's basically a free Adobe um, soft like website that allows you to download fonts and then they're free to use if you have the Adobe software so I'm sure most of you guys watching this video are even if you're starting out have at least a partial creative cloud and I believe this Adobe fonts is free with any type of creative cloud subscription and what's cool about this program is you can browse fonts and from there you're able to narrow it down by a lot of cool features so you have the width or the weight the width contrast sans serif so we want a bold sans serif so we're going to go sans serif let's do a heavier weight right here so we want it to be like a black weight typeface and a wider type font so let's kind of look around at these termina i think i'm going to use this one i actually already have it downloaded but you can go here and if, if I didn't have it, you would click here to toggle it, activate font, and you want Termina Black. And I'll put this link in the description for um, Adobe fonts as well as this font specifically. Let's close that up. And now you'd go back here and after you activate it, it's gonna be ready right away. You go to your font panel and you type in Termina and it should come up. There it is. So see, we got the super. See, it's a nice black typeface and it's really bold and it'll be good for what we're trying to do. And so what I was doing here is the align. And if you don't see it right here on your side panel, you go to window, align, and then make sure it's aligned to artboard. And with that, you're able to center it this way and horizontally. And you can also align it to the top side. So that's how that works. And that's really good for centering stuff. So now I want to mess with kind of the kerning and stuff. We're going to go here and set the kerning to optical and the tracking right over here to Mm, let's do like negative 20 all right now let's make a copy of this command C and then command V and let's just put that over there that's gonna be our text in case we ever want to change it to something else Because I'm going to convert this into a shape right now actually you might not have to let's do it this way so now you're gonna do a command C and then command F which will paste it in front or control whichever you're working on I'm actually on control right now on a PC and so what that did I can show you with the out hotkeys too you want to go click on your object and, or your type and go edit copy edit paste in front so now we have another one on top if you do command control Y you can kind of see that we have two now all right and now from here what we want to do is move it over or we'll actually bring up the swatches panel 
So you go window swatches this color. Let's choose anything for now, like this green. And what we want to do is hold shift and left click on the keypad. So the arrow keys go over one and go up one. So see, we already have that kind of shadowy effect going on. And let's actually bring it down just one or bring it up one more so we kind of get rid of that that weird shape that was right there. And so this is where we can do the blend. So you're going to go over here to the blend tool or it's actually W for the hotkey. Let's expand both these. Object, expand. So now we have two fills. And these are now objects instead of type. So it'll be easier to manipulate. We go front and back with the blend tool and that's just a left click. And you can see it already made one in between so that made a blend by one. So if you click, double click on the tool right here while you have this selected, you can actually change this. We'll go to preview, specified steps. So you can get this cool kind of 80s effect around like 10, 12, a lot of lines. But what we want is a seamless kind of full 3D all the way. So let's, we're going to do something high like 100. And there we got the full kind of blend going on. And that's looking pretty cool already. But we want to kind of differentiate some of this more. So. What we're going to do is go Object, Expand, OK. And see, this will have created all our little shapes in there. See, there's like a hundred different layers in the background. All right. And so what we want to do is Object, Ungroup. And now we have the layers all separate. So you could actually pull out all 100 of those layers and do whatever you want with them. But what we want to do is grab the top one, left click, Object, Lock, Selection. All right, now the top one is locked, so we highlight the rest of them, and we're going to go to the Pathfinder tools right here, but where you'll go if you don't see it is Window, Pathfinder, and will open it up, and then we're going to click Unite, and what Unite does is brings all those 100 layers together into one shape, so you can see now it's one shape and then our top shape, so we're going to go to Object, Unlock All, and select our top shape and make it a different color. So see, we already kind of have the 3D effect going on. But I want to use kind of a gradient to make it look more smooth. So we're going to go to the swatches panel. And if you don't see it, remember you can go window and then swatches. And so the swatches, they're the window panel. Actually, you can get open up pretty much anything from there. And then on the swatches, we want to select our front and go over to gradients. And let's just do tints and shades. So these are more simple gradients and they'll be easier to manipulate. All right, and so we're gonna go, let's do this blue right here. I like that. And then for the background, now that we united it, we can do a solid orange gradient and that's looking pretty cool. But we wanna, I wanna make this darker. So I'm gonna go to window, gradient and see how it goes from left to right. We can change that to 90. Now we're going top to bottom. And I want to bring this over like that to kind of darken up some of those hues. And for the back, I'm going to do the same thing. Bring it over, darken it up. All right. So now we have pretty much the basis of what we want to do. And one more touch I want to add is on click on your top super layer. And go to Window, Stroke, Show Options. And then we're going to add a light, light gray stroke, almost white. And that's one point. So you can see the different stroke weight is, will tell you, will make the thing thicker or smaller. And see how it kind of messed up our alignment right there? What we want to do is align stroke to inside. So that keeps it nice and flush. So we got the basics of what we're trying to do. What I want to do is add a little script. Let's do that. Oh, apostrophe S. I think that's how it should be. It's not, I don't know, not much of a grammar person, but let's do maybe 24, center that, and let's do, I have this one Oracle script, I think that'll look cool. Let's make that mm, 36, let's do 40, and we'll center that, and we can center all this so it's, we know it's all lined up. All right, and now I'm going to actually expand that since I won't need it as type. And let's tilt it just a little, give it some room to breathe right there. 
Let's make it that light. Oh, I'm on the stroke. Let's make it that light gray. So that, that looks pretty cool. And we're going to group that. Command G. Or you can go object, group. And what we want to do is go file, export, export as. And then see right here we have Photoshop PSD. And then use artboards. Make sure you click that. All right, so now we exported it as we want right layers. We want all this, not flat. If you flatten it, we won't have our layers anymore. And let's push OK. And so this will create a Photoshop file from Illustrator, which will be easier for us to open up. So now what I'm going to do is go to my folder. And we're going to open up that 3D text in Photoshop. So wherever you exported it to, just find it and open it up. All right, see we have it right here. That's our first layer. What I want to do here is go solid color and add a black fill to the background because we need something to, to live on. So see, that's some good contrast. Now we'll go Command T. And if you don't, don't want to use the hotkey, you can go to Image. Or I think, is it Edit and Transform or Free Transform, Control T. And we want to hold Option and Shift or sorry just hold option and that lets us resize with constrained proportions and from the center let's bring it somewhere right about there all right let's actually bring it down just a little bit but if you see this isn't rasterized now because we're in Photoshop so it's not going to be as much of a vector object all right now what I want to do is kind of add some texture to give it more of a grainy kind of look. What I'm going to do first is go right click convert to smart object and this will make this a lot more easier to manage and if we want to edit it we can click in and edit it in a separate Photoshop file. Alright we want to go filter noise add noise. And I just want to do like let's do 1.2 something like that. Pretty subtle but if you see it kind of softens it up which is nice. All right, and then from there I want to add this texture in, and I'll actually add the texture into the description so you can download it. I usually keep a lot of my textures in a specific um, folder, so I have them and I'm, they're easy to access, and here we go. So this is kind of a film grain dust texture, and this is going to be cool for this. So we have it on top, and it, obviously you can see it's covering our file, but if we go to screen, here you go, blending modes right here, screen. It, it lets some of that through and it gives us that nice cool texture. It's a little harsh, so we want to go to the opacity and reduce it to like 65. That should look pretty good. Let's actually move this down a couple notches with the arrow key. All right, so that's looking pretty good. One more thing I want to do is add kind of a little gradient lens flare thing coming up from the bottom. So you'll go on the left over here to the gradient tool. And see, I have a red one right here. And how you, if you want to make that uh, from scratch, what you would do is you'd go basics, and this is just black to transparent. So the gradient's from black to nothing. And you'll see how that looks like that. See, we, we want that to be a kind of red and orange. So right here, we'll double click on that, make it red, add another stop somewhere right around here. You just click in there, make it orange. That's a little dark, actually make it somewhere like that so now we have this red to orange gradient which is pretty cool and see if you just hold without holding shift it's all wonky like that but if you hold shift you can pull it straight up we want to go maybe an inch down and just pull it up to like right about there maybe a little more something like that and from there we can set the blending mode to screen and bring down the opacity to maybe 40 all right, then you want to do control T and this gives us control of the shape now and we're going to hold shift and bring it up ever so slightly maybe somewhere around the middle see that gives us our light coming up from the bottom which is going to I think look pretty good Let's bring it down to like 25 and so from here I don't really know how I'm feeling about this color anymore so let's open up the hue and saturation so you go down here, add a filter, hue and saturation, 
and from here you can move all stuff all around and see what you like with the color and I'm really liking this kind of Lakers style yellow and purple I think that's looking pretty good and it brings the blue out more and I'm gonna bring down the saturation just a little bit to like 10 let's do 10 yeah and what I'm gonna do with this is bring it right above my type and go create clipping mask so it's only affecting this and then I want to do a right click duplicate okay bring it up above our blue make it makes it blue on our lens flare right here and we'll do the same thing you can hold option and click right there to create a clipping mask or you can go right click clipping mask what a clipping mask does is it's only applying this little filter or whatever is above it to that layer that's right below it and we want to bring up the saturation a little more on that blue maybe bring up the lightness a little bit yeah so that's looking pretty good and then let's see I think I even want to bring this up a little bit more so it covers more of our there we go alright and so that's pretty much it from there you can uh, if it's, if it's where you like it you can file save and you can if you want to make it a JPEG or whatever you can go to export as and you have all your different options right here alright so I hope this is helpful I wanted for my first video to create something kinda simple and people can follow along it's a simple 3d text in Illustrator and Photoshop please make sure to like comment subscribe all that stuff that it'll really help me out putting in the description the fonts that we use as well as the link to the uh, Adobe fonts so, uh, website and then we are also going to I'm gonna put a link to a patreon that I set up which is gonna be something small like five bucks a month or so and that'll actually give you access to all the source files from the video so if you don't want to spend the time recreating it, you can have the source files and mess with them and look in them and see how I did things very specifically. And that'll also give you access to our Discord. And in the Discord, we're going to talk about design, give feedback, more one-on-one -on -one stuff, and a lot more stuff to come in the future. So appreciate everyone that's helped me out and supported me on this so far. And if you want to give me a suggestion for a video upcoming or you have any comments on this one, please let me know. It would be super helpful and hope you all have a nice day.